Do you enjoy sail-proof car reviews? If so, please be sure to click my picture in the corner right over there to subscribe and click the bell notification for a friendly reminder every single week. And welcome to another episode. Behind me is a 1979 Mercedes-Benz 300D. And this vehicle is absolutely legendary because of its durability. It is next to bulletproof. People have tried to kill these cars and they can't. I've borrowed the car behind me from a viewer here in Seattle, Washington, who actually just moved to the area from Michigan with this car. So even though the car is almost 40 years old and with 260,000 miles on it, it made a trip from Michigan out here without a single problem. Now Mercedes-Benz as an auto manufacturer has an incredibly long and incredibly rich history. So today I thought I'd give you a brief history of Mercedes-Benz and their sales here in the United States. Then I'm gonna go on a walk around of the Mercedes-Benz behind me here, the 300D from 1979. And then I'm gonna ask 10 random people if they saw this car at a dealership, would it be desirable or would it be sale proof? Guys, please forgive my funeral attire in the video as I just got out of a sales meeting. Anyway, Mercedes-Benz, here's a brief history. Mercedes-Benz traces its roots back to 1886 when Carl Benz created the Benz Patent Motor Wagon, which is credited for being the very first gasoline-powered automobile. This car paved the way for engineers Gottlieb Daimler and Wilhelm Maybach to convert a stagecoach to a fully functioning automobile with the addition of a petrol engine. It was basically a 19th century example of an LS swap. The resulting car they decided to call the Mercedes 35 horsepower model. It was actually named after the daughter of an automotive entrepreneur, Emil Jelinek, who at the time was essentially the very first Mercedes car salesman. He patented and sold the car under Daimler ownership and promoted it specifically to high society social circles. The brand had been solidified as a household name amongst the wealthy. It wasn't until 1926, however, that the Daimler company and the Benz company merged and changed the brand name from Mercedes to Mercedes-Benz. Now that Mercedes-Benz has been established, let's fast forward to 1952 and go to New York where there lives a gentleman named Max Hoffman who's a dealer and importer. Max was the sole Volkswagen distributor for the Eastern United States during the time. Plus he was the only BMW distributor throughout the United States at the time. And he also imported Alfa Romeo and ultimately Mercedes-Benz vehicles. So he was really influential for bringing German cars to the United States during the 1950s. In 1952, Max started importing Mercedes and more specifically, he was importing the legendary 300 SL Gullwing model, which is an iconic vehicle. He imported and sold approximately 1,400 of the 300 SLs, which by today's standards isn't a lot, but back then it was a huge number. And the reason it was so important was because this was the first time in history Mercedes had sales success outside their home market in Germany. Eventually, more Mercedes-Benz models were brought to the United States, and then ultimately in 1965, Mercedes-Benz USA was incorporated. It wasn't until 1976 that Mercedes-Benz brought the car that cemented their place as the best bourgeoisie car choice amongst the entire automotive landscape, and that was the W123 platform chassis and body. The W123 platform and body is the same body style of the Mercedes that I reviewed in today's video, and Mercedes sold just shy of 2.7 million cars worldwide. Part of the reason the car sold so well was because the style at the time was unlike any other, and the owners were very happy with the durability and quality of the vehicle overall. In fact, there are so many vehicles that are still on the road today because they don't die, especially the diesel models. The car sold from 1976 to 1986 in various body configurations as well as various powertrain configurations, and the closest equivalent on the Mercedes lineup today would be something in between the Mercedes C-Class and the Mercedes E-Class, which are both very commonly chosen luxury vehicles amongst car buyers today. So that's a brief history of Mercedes-Benz sales and its origins. If there's something important that you believe I missed, please feel free to leave a comment in my comment section below. But now, let's head back to the 300D and take a look around it. 
To start our walk around of the 1979 Mercedes-Benz 300D, I wanted to talk about Euro spec versus US spec. Now, this particular vehicle was purchased brand new in England in 1979. However, it was actually a US spec car instead of a Euro spec car. And what happened is over the years, it's traded hands a couple of times and the current owner drove this one out from Michigan and slowly but surely he's actually been converting it over to a Euro spec car. One way that you can tell it's a Euro spec car is because of the headlights. Now you'll notice that the headlights on this car are kind of a solid rectangular shape versus the US spec cars actually had a couple of bubble headlights as I'm indicating in the picture right here. And so these headlights are the Euro spec headlights. Another way you can tell is actually the bumpers, and that's not as obvious, but the Eurospec bumpers are a little bit thinner. Theoretically, in 1979, it was safer to have a bigger bumper, so they actually jut out a little bit more. So it's a little bit thicker on the front side as well as on the rear side. And the other aspects that make this a Euro car as opposed to a United States car aren't as obvious. That's gonna be the running gear. So the 300D was a non-turbo five-cylinder diesel engine, which in the United States version made 78 horsepower. However, this one was actually swapped for the Euro engine. However, this one was swapped for the European version, which is still a five-cylinder non-turbo diesel, which makes a whopping 88 horsepower instead of 78 horsepower. So you're that much faster with a Eurospec car. And I know what some of you guys are saying, oh, that one doesn't have the Eurospec turn signals, which this one doesn't have the Eurospec turn signals installed just yet, but the owner may plan on doing that sometime soon. Next on our walk around of the 300D, I wanted to actually talk about something that's specific to this car, and that would actually be the color. The color is a fairly rare color. It's called Caledonia Green, and it was only available from the 1977 through the 1979 model years. So not only is the car really old, but the color was rare to begin with, and this particular vehicle being a survivor in that particular color makes it all the more appealing. In fact, the owner of this vehicle actually got a personalized plate that says avocado because the color is very avocado-like to match the color of this vehicle. And while we're on the passenger side of the Mercedes, I wanted to point out something odd. If you take a look, there's no passenger side side mirror. And that was actually fairly common for cars from this era because it was an option that you could purchase from the manufacturer. It wasn't until the 1980s when federal law was changed that required all cars to have this side mirror. Oh, how the times have changed. Now we're going to head to the interior of the 1979 Mercedes 300D. And when you look around the interior, you can definitely tell that this car was from another time period. Now you could tell on the outside by its styling, but if you take a look at all the switches and knobs and controls, they look very different. They actually feel really solid, really simple, and it's actually pretty odd and pretty different compared to cars that are built today. Let me show you what I mean. We'll do this going from left all the way to the right. So when you start all the way on the left, you'll notice that there's a brake release, but instead of being a brake release that has the little finger grips on it that you can pull, this one actually looks something like a choke button, which is pretty interesting. So you have the brake release that looks a little bit like a choke button, and then to the right of that, you have the switch that turns on your lights, which is relatively self-explanatory. And it says in big bold letters below, lights. So that way you know that it is your lighting system. And you'll notice that big bold font seems to be a theme throughout the entire car's interior. And I actually love how easy it is to find everything in the interior because of those big bold letters. For example, on the center stack, you have your climate controls. You can tell easily where the air conditioning is. And then you have your defroster and your dome light buttons right above that. Then you can look up at your gauge cluster, which actually for the year had a surprising amount of information. In the center, you have your speedometer and you have your odometer right below that. To the right, you actually have an analog clock, which is something that a couple of car brands have brought back to this day to give the car a nice retro feel. And then to the left, you have your oil temperature, you have your general temperature, and you also have your gas tank. You'll notice that your gas gauge, which is going to be to the left and up top, it says one out of one, it says one out of two, which would mean that's your half. And then all the way over to the left, you'll see it says R. The reason it says R is because that is your gas tank reserve. So they actually showed you what your gas tank reserve was in older vehicles versus newer vehicles. They just assume that people know. Well, if you didn't know, now you know because you're watching this video. Besides big, bold letters, everything feels really high quality throughout the interior of the W123 Mercedes. For example, this armrest, was amongst one of the best armrests that I've seen in any car that I've ever sat in, and clearly I was having way too much fun playing with it, but my favorite was actually the handle, specifically the handle to open the sunroof. Now, it's a manual sunroof, 
but it's got this chrome plated material and it feels surprisingly heavy and surprisingly sturdy. That's why people buy these cars and hold on to them forever. That is a complete walk around of the 1979 Mercedes-Benz 300D. Now, let's ask 10 random people if they think this car is desirable or if it is sail-proof. Despite the ugly 1994 Nissan Maxima that's moving, we are off to a pretty darn good start. It looks like we are at two for, I'm sorry, three for three green check marks for this green Mercedes-Benz 300D. Oh, shucks. There's a red Prius that just parked behind it. That red Prius could influence the decisions of the rest of the people that are taking a look at this beautiful 1979 Mercedes-Benz 300D W123. Wait, sorry, I just lost track of time. Is this actually happening? We were at nine for nine green check marks. Holy cow, 10 for 10? Unbelievable. The very first 10 people that I asked about the Mercedes all said that it was a desirable vehicle, making it the least sale-proof car that I've ever reviewed. However, what say you? What do you think? Do you think the Mercedes-Benz is desirable or do you think it's sale-proof? Please feel free to leave your opinion and a comment below in my comment section. Do you enjoy sale-proof car reviews? If so, please be sure to click my picture in the corner right over there to subscribe and click the bell notification for a friendly reminder every single week.